these um, students will go so far to try and change the world as to how they want it. But then every so often, yeah, these shocks happen. And every so often, I think, like I say, Trump, and Brexit being prime examples, students and not just students, I think even more to the point, academics, administrators who are working mm -hmm. in universities, then have this complete and utter shock when they're confronted with the fact that not everybody thinks the same way as they do. Right. And I think as we've seen this past week, they just cannot handle that at all. Right. So, all right. So let's talk about some of the yeah. students that are that are protesting right now, because it's uh, everyone knows that watches this show. I am absolutely for free speech. I am absolutely for free expression. I am absolutely for protest. All of those things, for sure. Where I would draw the line in this case is that you can't do anything illegal in your protest. So if you're blocking roadways and stopping ambulances from getting there, or even if you're just stopping someone from getting to work or going home or whatever else, you can't break the law. You can do it in public places, you can do it in a field, at your house, you can organize online petitions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What seems scary to me about what they're doing, for putting the legal part aside, because they are blocking roadways mm -hmm. and things like that, is that they're protesting right now, they're, they're not protesting an issue. So they're not protesting a specific law that was passed that they might find unjust or unfair. They're protesting the results of an election Absolutely. that no one is contesting. Absolutely. Now we can have a whole discussion about electoral college and popular vote, but that's not what they're protesting. They're protesting the results because they don't like them. Mm -hmm. But I think you would argue that is a very clear and direct result of everything that they've been taught so far. Absolutely. I think you give them too much credit when you use the word protesting. Yeah. I mean, I've... Um, You're going to turn me into... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a little darker after yeah. this. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think it gives them... It, it kind of gives it too much status to term this a protest. I mean, I think it's something far more... And I'm going to sound like a horrible person here. Um, but I think it's much more akin to a toddler tantrum. I mean, I was very involved with politics when I was at university. Uh, but, you know, we never had cry-ins, <laughs> we never had primal screams, right. um, you know, and what you've got is this kind of outpouring of rage and uh, the thing that worries me as well, and the reason why I think it's not political and it's not protest, is it's being described in this very therapeutic language of grief mm -hmm. and healing and a kind of discussion about the need to share suicide hotline prevention numbers and... Um, and you're rewarded love. in a way for it, right? You're rewarded yeah, for your victim. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the more you're damaged by this. Absolutely. I think yeah. politics generally has become so confused with this kind of virtue signalling. And again, you see, I think you saw this very, very much in the UK with the whole kind of leave and remain in the EU thing. And this idea that you your vote to remain in the EU, or I think in, in the US, you know, your vote for Hillary Clinton, kind of is much more than just a vote. It's much more than just a tick in the box or, um, you know, where you stand on a particular position. It's about you. And you see this in, for example, Lena, uh, what's her name? Lena, Lena Dunham's. Dunham. Yeah. Her kind Guess of what? Not going tree. to Canada. <laughs> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> the Canadians are all cheering. Yeah, they're happy. <laughs> but this idea that all of these things that go on in the world are all about them. Mm -hmm. It's all about me. Yeah. And so if something happens that I don't like, you know, I am devastated. I need to heal. I need to grieve. I need to cry. So the pain all is about all about emotions. them, but the excuse is always about someone else. Else, right, because I even saw Lena Dunham the tweeted it, tweeted the patriarchy and all that. Because I saw she tweeted just a couple days ago, or right before the election, something about how evil white men and yeah. blah blah blah. But my dad was an evil white man, and they're all evil and blah. and it's like. So the, you can revel in the pain yeah, that that gets you yeah, very high yeah. up in your virtue signaling. So that's great. But the, the fault is never yours. No. It's always the white man. Well, I think that's absolutely system. true. Absolutely yeah. true. Um, really important point. Uh, but so I think it's not protesting. It's this kind of just outpouring, um, nebulous outpouring of, of nothingness, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, <laughs> other than look at me, look at me. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't gratify it with the label of a protest. Um, but then I think the second point that you make is, is absolutely spot on, because what they're essentially doing is is um, complaining about people, um, complaining about the decision that people made in that election box. And they're not saying, th there's no sense of analysis, where did we go wrong? Why mm -hmm. didn't we convince people? There's no sense of reflection to think, well, why don't people agree with us? Um, it's just, we don't like these people right. who voted differently to right. how we wanted them to vote.